So today I will be painting in this moleskin watercolor book. These are lovely watercolor books and I also dry some of the leaves behind the, in the, on the last page. I just used the last page to dry some of my flowers that I've painted before um, just for the fun of it. And today I thought we will be painting this little leaf, this tiny little palm leaf. It's a miniature. I'm not sure what the name is. I will find out and then share it. Or if you know, you can let me know what the name is. I'm obviously going to paint it a little bit different. And I'm going to use the sneaky watercolors that I have in my, on my palette here. Let me just show it to you. This little box. These are lovely. They're lovely little travel palettes. And they fun they can fit in your handbag depending on how big your bag is and then obviously I use a few of my brushes there yeah, on my patron in my patron brushes that I use all the time so if you want to join us on patreon you're welcome to hop on over and then go and join you don't have to have a PayPal account um, we just use PayPal, it's more secure for you and for me. So I want to use this green, which is olive green. And then I also want to use a little bit of sepia with it, just to darken it slightly. So these are the two colors that I will be using. And I hardly clean my palette because I don't waste the paint, except if you paint something very light and watery and you don't want to muddy your painting then i will suggest you clean your palette but i use the greens all year my reds all year and a mixture of the browns here and if i want to mix my yellows separately i will mix it in a different little plate separately from the palette just to keep it clean so that i don't muddy my work colors i always have tissue paper handy clean water preferably two glasses i have my eraser a pencil um, and, and then obviously a paintbrush, whichever brushes you prefer, doesn't matter. Um, I'm going to use one with a little bit of a point because I want to get these nice little points that you have there. So I'm going to do a very loose painting just for relaxation and fun so you can paint along if you want. I do have a few other tutorials on YouTube for free and then I also have some videos on Patreon so if you want to you can go and check it out the Patreon channel the tutorials they are a lot more in-depth and step-by-step -step. so and you also receive a line drawing supplies I use and you also receive the reference photo and the finished painting to use as reference. So what I want to do is I'm going to let's pop it here so it can mix between colors. Let's see. Alright, I'm just going to move this palette up so that I have it closer by and I'm going to go with a so you can see okay um so i'm going to draw it from here and i'm going to push the brush down lift up push down so that it's not all the same thickness and go back over and drop a little bit more color in there and now what you want to do is the same as the other fern that I painted you want to make sure that you don't have too much pigment on your brush so I'm going to go in and they are sort of overlapping and then they I'm gonna push my brush down and just pull it 
to the edge there. Now you don't want too much water there because it will cause uh, the paint will flow back into the rest of your painting. And then I'm going to go and push it down again and go over to there. And then just lift it up and wipe it on your tissue paper. And create a beautiful little tip with your brush. So I'm also going to mix in a bit of the yellow. So I'm going to get quite a dark color. So every color is going to be different. Every section is going to be different. So if you have too much paint on your brush, that's what will happen. But you can always go back and just scrub it again. And so I'm going to go from here. Let's go and create a little funny looking folded one. Can you see that? You want to take your tissue and just lift out some of the color because you don't want too much of that to flow back onto your into your, the rest of your leaf and that's what we want clean water done dip it in your candle and then this one's a little bit light but i will go back later and just darken it a bit now for this one i'm going to push it down then push it flat on the paper so it's a fat section and then just move down to there and pull it and then go back over this section and see this brush holds quite a lot of water so if you want to just get a brush that don't hold a lot of water but I don't mind because I'm just going to move it around and I like those different colors but I still want to keep it nice and neatly. Then I just scrub to soften those little markings there. Okay. Again. So I want to create this one that I can see here, which sort of go like this um, and fold for my angle. And then there. And then I'm going to go back a little bit thinner over there and just lighten those little markings there and just push it around so you don't get that hard line that I showed you in the other tutorial that will be uploaded soon. I'm busy uploading it today so go and look at that because I show you exactly what happens if you don't control the amount of water on your brush okay so basically the brush strokes are very easy let's get a bit of yellow um, so what you want to do let me move this up a little bit so that I can show you. Hang on a second. So, what you want to do, let me just move this paint up here because I don't have enough space here. My table is very small, excuse me. So, let's do a practice swatch here so that you can see. So, this is what we want to do. You want to push your brush, put your brush on the paper, push it down, make a little twirl or turn, push it to there. Then you're going to go back and follow the same line, but just next to it and come back to that tip and move it like that. So we don't mind a little bit of a highlight there. You can just go back with your brush and just darken it slightly because you want the other side, for instance, the right side to be different to the this side. And like I said, this brush holds quite a lot of water. So just go over it while it's still wet and adjust those colors like that. And make a nice dip. 
I want them to all be the same. And you can just neaten up some of the markings if you're not happy with it. There you go. And I'm quite happy with that. This is for practice. You'll eventually get so good with your leaves that you'll enjoy doing this. So now this one, where... I had a bit too much pigment on my brush. I'm just going to go over there again because it's completely dry now. And I'm just going to add a bit more color. And you can see again, there's a lot more water or pigment. And just lift it up. That's what you want. Quick and easy. And let's go with this one. Um, let me move the paper up again sorry for that okay so now we want to create those two at the top here and I'm going to push my brush down very thick one preferably you don't want too much pigment on your brush and then you can go from this side whatever is easy for you and just move up and pull it to the tip there and then later on you can darken it like i did with that one so i'm going to mix a bit more of the color so this is the olive green a little bit of the yellow you can either use lemon yellow or cadmium yellow whatever you prefer and now we're going to again let me just pull my camera closer so let's do it from this side. I'm gonna also overlap that section there and then pull, push down, pull to the end there, make a little sharp point there, and then go from that side. And even if you overlap, it's beautiful. And there you go, a nice long tip there. Then I'm going to wipe my brush and just pick up some of that pigment so the minute you drop your brush in water now you will have water on your brush and you will create a bloom on your watercolors you don't want to do that so you rather want to just wipe your brush on a tissue and then move some of the pigment off onto your tissue paper so that it doesn't flow back into your painting let me show you one we'll create one that is a mistake so I'm going to mix a little bit more color, a little bit more cadmium yellow. And I'm going to have quite a lot of pigment on my brush and my brush is going to be wet. Okay, so I'm going to put my brush down and then lift it up. See that backflow there, pigment? I'm going to leave it. Then I'm going to wet my brush again, pick up more pigment. And then I'm going to go on this side like we did now with the other ones and do that. So it might be a little bit too much pigment, but I'm going to leave that because I want to show you what you don't want. And that's why you don't have too much paint on your brush. Just want to put some in there so it doesn't slide down. Let's put the eraser there. It's a little bit at an angle. I don't want it to flow into that now. But that is what you don't want. That is why you preferably want a tissue paper near you and you dab up your dab it on your tissue paper. So yeah, um, let's do another little leaf. I'm going to put this one down and I'm going to put it to you. Now, also the other thing is what you want to do if you are a beginner in watercolor, you don't want any hand cream on your hands. You preferably want to wash your hands so that there's no oil or anything on your hand. Your hands have to be completely dry and clean when you paint. No oils, no oily hand creams or anything. Um, because the minute you touch your watercolor paper with oil on your hands, the color will not absorb into the paper. So it's one thing to remember. And then for this, I'm going to go back to, they're all not equally across from each other. They're a little bit lower down. So I want to put this one down, 
will let my hands a little bit in the way, but it will, I will move it away now. Today, I'm going to pick up a bit more color. And I'm going to go on this side. And pull it. Then again, wipe on my paper. And pick it up. So put it on the same line. Just to smooth it out. That way you won't create any of those backflows of pigment into watercolour. I hope this will help you. I'm going to finish this and I will see you again tomorrow. Or sometime, depends when I get to paint again, with another video. I hope you will subscribe to our channel. And follow along on our journey where we teach what colors. Let's just move this again. Okay, so I'm quite happy with that and I'm going to go there and pull this one up there. Make sure I remove the excess pigment so there's not too much of the pigment. And when you want to remove it, preferably go over the whole section. And then on that side, I want a bit darker color. And wipe it on your tissue paper and just lift it out and I'm gonna go back a bit more of a different color maybe a little bit darker and I'm going to go on this side there and just drop in some of that color there and pick it up Oops. You don't want that, so you lift it up and wipe it on your tissue paper instead of rinsing your brush. And, <clears throat> sorry, some of the leaves you want to leave as light as possible and different colors. That will give the whole painting just such a different look than having it all the same color so by just adjusting a little bit of your color with a bit of yellow i didn't even use the ivory black or the sepia i used a bit more yellow because i used only this olive green from sminky and then the cadmium yellow which is this one and obviously i'm going to clean it off now because for next time they're already clean but I leave my palette like this 
and only when it's very very messy will I clean it off sometimes I find beautiful colors that I need for a painting right here in this section here of my palette so we'll just use this I hope you guys had fun I am going to be back soon with another informative tutorial for you the leaf that we've painted and now I'm going to just put it in the back of my um, moleskin watercolor book let me try and show you quickly what I did so I normally would put just some dried leaves in there that I kept like the little rose petal and everything I do put a sylvia down just so that all the um, oils and the moisture in the plants don't absorb into the paper but I won't necessarily paint on the last page of this book I like to keep some memories of all the stuff that I painted so here it is most of these we painted so normally just another thing that I normally do when I'm finished with watercolors is I would immediately rinse my brushes and then dry them on tissue paper and then I will take the tissue paper let me just find one and put it closer down here I will take my tissue paper rinse my brush and you see this brush has a very nice tip so you want to keep it that way and by doing this on a piece of tissue or a hand towel preferably your hand towels will be all um, colored because pigment normally absorb into your hand towel so if you use a white hand towel they will all be stained um, it's not easy to get clean believe me I've checked them they don't normally come clean but for instance a brown little towel, towel or any little dish cloth that you don't uh, want to use anymore is perfect for your brushes and I will just wipe them like this and store them away make sure they are completely dry and I will lie them flat and preferably a little bit down at an angle so that all the water that collects in there will run out and dry so by the next day your brush is completely dry again and you're only wetted in water again to activate or to soften the hairs I never store my brushes like this straight after i've painted upright in a glass i will do it once i know that this is completely dry but i never do it while my brush is still drying because this is wet and stays wet for quite some time like wet hair and this is a synthetic brush so it's not real um, sable hair it is synthetic and it still takes quite some time to dry completely